It was later in the evening and my husband and I were both at home and watching TV and all of a sudden everything just shook. It just felt like somebody kicked your chair. And then of course Facebook lit up with, man did you feel that? When they were continuing, then you know we were starting to think, well, what's going on? What's causing this? And Every scientist I've talked to um, that's any kind of, you know, seismologist, you know, their opinion is it's caused from an injection well. When I first brought this issue up, they said, oh, well, it, it hasn't anything to do with the fracking in the wells because we've done this for years. One argument we've heard from the gas companies is we don't know if there's been earthquakes here before we have drilled, and that's true but you know you definitely probably aggravated the situation the town of azel sits on top of the barnett shale a geographic formation where natural gas and oil are being extracted wastewater from those operations is often discarded through pressurized injections into underground wells a recent count showed six active wastewater disposal sites near azel I think they know that these cause earthquakes. There's been enough scientific study done in Arkansas, in Ohio, in Germany, in Russia, in the Netherlands, all different geographical locations. There's enough studies done that they know. Shortly after these started, SMU actually was out here and putting instruments in the ground. So at least that was being done and we did have that. Studying North Texas earthquakes is not unique to SMU. What's unique about this particular Azel study is that we have a lot of additional instrumentation. We deployed those in the Azel area to start um, gathering more local data of the earthquakes. And what that allows us to do is locate the earthquakes, determine fault plane solutions for the earthquakes, and measure ground accelerations, which are useful for improving hazard estimates. At the site of natural gas recovery, a vertical well is drilled approximately 6,000 feet straight down into the ground through several layers of earth and rock. Once the drill reaches the level at which the shale is located, the drill changes direction, fracturing fluid, primarily a mixture of water and sand, is then pumped from the surface facility down the well bore and into the fractures. The fractures crack, expand, and branch out, allowing the natural gas to be extracted more easily. Once all the fractures are completed, the plugs are drilled out and the natural gas is able to flow, allowing for extraction. The natural gas is then pumped up the well bore to the surface facility for processing. If you think of a rock as, or as fault as being two layers, like this, 
um, if you increase pore pressure, okay, by adding fluid, you can kind of release uh, normal stress, like you reduce normal stress, the normal stress being the downward force in this case. And when you do that, you kind of unclamp the fault and allow it to fail. All right. So that is one model out there for how wastewater injection wells can be related to earthquakes on faults. Around the world today, with modern horizontal drilling techniques and hydraulic fracturing, the trapped oil and natural gas in these shale reservoirs is being safely and efficiently produced, gathered, and distributed to customers. This is safe. Just because you tell me that doesn't mean it is. We have no control or any jurisdiction over the injection wells in our area. The Azel mayor had gone in, uh, and talked to the uh, Railroad Commission and had this get-together, which is what I was proposing, you know, was uh, getting some information out to the citizens. And so I went to, uh, to the gathering, which is where the Railroad Commission, when they first came down. Talking to the Railroad Commission almost felt the same as talking to the gas companies. So it wasn't very encouraging. It's like you have to kind of keep repeating yourself, keep repeating yourself to them because they just dismiss it. Due to the size of the crowd and the number of people that want to comment, it is going to be strictly limited to two minutes. But we did have a lot of folks that want to talk. Uh, we're scheduled to be finished at uh, 7 o'clock. Unfortunately, I have a super busy full schedule tomorrow in Austin. I've got to get back to that. Since we are on such a tight time frame, we're trying to keep it to comments only. Um, so, if, if, and we want to hear, no. The first speaker, you know, basically had a question and they said, well, we're not answering questions tonight. We're here just to gather information and to get comments. And the, and the citizens had every right to be upset. And were they unruly? No, they weren't. Maybe if the earth shakes down in Austin, we'll get some results. <laughs> Why on earth would they come? Why would they even come when they had no intentions of answering any questions? That was. That was worse than just staying in Austin and not saying a word. They got a real bad reputation definitely after the meeting. In their defense, they came out and they re, you know, reacted quickly. The reaction and their preparation wasn't good, but they did react quickly, which for state government was you know, very unheard of. If you treat most people with respect, they will treat you with respect back. That meeting was insulting and very disrespectful. On their part. On their part, on, the, on, on our elected officials part. How dare they come and tout like they're going to have answers for us. And number one, not only did they not have answers, they didn't even have the decency to say, look folks, we don't know, let's talk it out. They said, we're not answering any questions. Really? Well, what are you here for? Did you just need a vacation to Azel? You kind of get the feeling sometimes you're getting smoke blown at you. The biggest result to date has just been the increased public awareness of earthquakes, but also the political pressure that you saw put on the Texas Railroad Commission uh, to the point where they've now hired a or are in the process of hiring a seismologist to 
start to look at the sh number of earthquake sequences that have happened in North Texas, but also more broadly in Texas um, over the past 10 or 15 years. The Railroad Commission's hired the seismologist. Um, quite an impressive resume. <clears throat> Very nice gentleman. The seismologist they hired, he is an expert on induced earthquakes. He is funny because he's never actually felt a man-made earthquake. He's only felt induced earthquakes. The seismicity rate has decreased substantially since the early time period, November, December, and January. It is our working hypothesis that some sort of wastewater injection has changed the stress regime at depth in some way and essentially triggered, size, triggered earthquakes. I believe it's the injection wells. I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear and I would love to get updated data to see why they've stopped, but that data is not available at this point, not until October. I had a lot of ideas for the Railroad Commission of how they could do things differently regarding the injection wells, um, you know, with a daily reporting requirements instead of, you know, their once a year reporting. These injection wells, once a year. They're pumping billions of gallons of poison into our ground, causing earthquakes, and nobody from the Railroad Commission has asked them for the current readings from September till now through the earthquakes. The problem the scientists are having with connecting the earthquakes to the injection wells is they need to see that, hey, on this day we had this earthquake, and at the same time their pressure spiked over here, or their volume spiked, or whatever it may be but they don't have that data because it's not required to be reported. That's the appearance to the general public is that there is no one really regulating the, the industry. If you're supposed to be regulating these industries, and then you, can, you tell me you have no control over them, that's not acceptable. We just want it to stop, go away, and nobody else have the problem because if they do prolong, I mean, it could hurt our local economy with property values and sales tax. And Don't tell me that a drought caused all these foundations to crack at the same time, that caused that crack up the wall there, that caused the crack that runs the length of this room. Don't tell me that was caused by a drought because we've been in droughts before and never had a problem. Now all of a sudden we have this, and what's different? 3.6. I had one friend of mine that had some cracks show up in his brick, you know, after one of the events. But the hard part is, you know, determining if it was actually caused by the earthquake or if it was just settling from the dry season we've had. Until a structural engineer or an earthquake engineer went out and truly assessed whether the damage was from the earthquake shaking or not, it's very hard um, to say what individual cracks are related to earthquakes or not. The end result would be definitely just to shut down the injection or injection wells that are causing the problem. Because, you know, we're not saying all injection wells are bad, but it's possible for one to be placed in a bad location. And so if that happens, it needs to be shut down and moved. Do I want to see them take this water and pump it in the ground somewhere else? No. I don't want it here, but I don't want to push it off on somebody else either. It really needs to be figured out what caused it so they can make sure it doesn't happen again because it is possible to have some big ones. We aren't sharing any results. Right now we are continuing to monitor. We will pass our study results off to uh, the Texas Railroad Commission, and the U.S. Geological Survey, and the mayor of Azel, and anyone like that. At that point it becomes a public policy Issue. Hopefully they'll just stop <laughs> and we won't have to worry about it again because if we have another decent sized one, the flurry is just going to happen again.
We made a difference in Austin or they wouldn't have hired a seismologist. The difference is they sat up and took notice. Something bothered them enough about this and I'd like to think it was that little town meeting that we had. The way nature goes is the way we're gonna go. So we better start taking care of what we've got here.